Greetings everyone, you are watching Backstage TV and I am here with Simon from Etika. Hi Hello. Simon, thank you for joining us. How are you today? Feeling good? I'm good, yeah. The tour is going really well and we're having uh, the best time. Happy to be here, it's going to be a big show, so I'm excited. What can we expect from Epica tonight? Well, we've been uh, working on making our show more visually pleasing. We have a really beautiful um, LED walls behind us that gives the show a little bit more 3D feeling. And of course, we always bring a lot of energy, fun and... Uh, we try to play the songs as best as we can. <laughs> what about the playlist? Some new songs? Is it some best of? Or how does, how does it do? It's a little bit uh, a mixture of the classics that we always do, but uh, this is the official Omega promotional European tour. So we start the show with uh, Omega songs, but of course we will never skip some Epica classics. And uh, yeah, it's going to be a very energetic set and uh, I hope the fans will love it. Uh, do you feel any difference between the audience, you know, different countries or even, you know, Europe or America? Do you feel the difference between the audience? Yes, yes, yeah, definitely. Also within Europe, I think the difference is not as, as big as if you were to compare Europe to, for example, Latin America. That's where they really go uh, wild. But sometimes you don't know what to expect because, uh, um, for example, within Germany, depending on where you play, the audience can be different. So it's in the same country, but it still can be different. And um, yeah, I'm, I think tonight's gonna be a really big show. And so far, I always love playing here. So I think tonight's gonna be wild, I can't wait. <laughs> Do you have any special memory from Czech Republic? I've been here many times. Yes, we played, of course, the Festival Masters of Rock many times, uh, love to be here. Also as a tourist, one of my favorite cities in the world is Prague, of course. It's incredibly beautiful. I love to do some sightseeing as well. And uh, yeah, it always feels like home when we're here. Perfect. What is the first thing that comes to your mind when about Czech Republic in general? Well, that's going to sound really silly, but one of my bandmates, Rob, he's yeah. a huge Hellboy fan. And he, uh, he told me that, that they shot some scenes for the Hellboy movies in Prague. So I, as a big movie fan myself, like Czech Republic, Prague, like, ah, Hellboy, you know. But that's because Rob and me were like movie nerds. But uh, yeah, for me, also Masters of Rock, the festival where we played so many times. I have so many fun memories about that. And uh, yeah, tonight, Bruno. Bruno, <laughs> yes. That's original answer, yes. Everyone is talking about beer, especially every time. So mm. this is like original, yes. <laughs> so is, is it an, anything new in Epica? Do you planning some new music and anything like that? Uh, well, we have the Alchemy Project, which is a collaboration uh, musical project it's an ep mm -hmm. where we have i think seven songs in total if i'm not mistaken where we worked with uh, some friends and colleagues in the metal scene to make some new style epica songs and you know as a kind of a it started as a fun project when the pandemic hit when we couldn't tour we finished the omega album and then uh, we started working on this project and we are also playing one of those songs during set tonight and uh, after this year for uh, all the festivals, we're going to start writing a new record. So. Perfect, can yeah. we? Do you have any songs yet written? Uh, well, all the band members start writing songs in their home studio by themselves, but I haven't heard any of those songs yet. But uh, we'll still be on the road for a week more, and then when we get home, we'll probably don't want to hear any music for a couple of days. <laughs> And when inspiration strikes, we'll just start writing, but we're going to like schedule writing sessions and yeah, we're all excited to write a new record. How does the songwriting look like in Epica? The boys starts with some music and you come with some vocal lines or do you sometimes start with a vocal line and send it to boys? Yeah. Well, it's, it's mostly that first they have some music, uh, some demos, and then I start to uh, come up with vocal lines for that. Um, that is that is mostly how it goes, but um, we start writing this, this. The guys start writing the songs, and then they give me a listen, so I can already come up with vocal lines, and then they can continue writing the songs to support the vocal lines. Um, sometimes songs are written really fast. Sometimes it takes long, and inspiration can strike at the weirdest times. So it's good that we always have the phone that we can quickly record melodies, whether it's for vocals or like a guitar riff or anything. And um, yeah. 
everybody has a home studio so it's very practical to quickly record ideas and then we get together um, because we live in four different countries we don't live in the same village and then we actually sit together and write the songs uh, finish writing the songs so yeah Uh, you are on tour with Apocalyptica. Yes. Why with exactly with them? Do you have any special relationship? I know you have songs to the, together, mm -hmm. but why with Apocalyptica? Yeah, the songs actually came after we started uh, or decided to tour together because I think both managements thought it was a good fit musically. Yeah. And we're both have been around for many years and there's the huge symphonic aspect yes. of Apocalyptica and, and Epica. And um, then when we started planning the tour and then, then shit hit the fan, we had the pandemic and <laughs> everything, um, that we started thinking, oh, maybe it's nice to do a song together. And we tried uh, a couple of songs to come up with like a cool uh, collaboration. And in the end, we decided to go for the song Rise, which is already on their released album. And then Eka um, wrote vocal, uh, wrote, um, the lyrics for it together with his girlfriend and um, the melody of the song, the vocal lines and the verses are already set. They're played by the cello, so I I adapted those uh, vocal lines and then I started to write like a new melody for the chorus and uh, a little lyric at the end. <laughs> And then Rise Again was born and then we thought, oh, we have to do a video. But I was on tour with Sabaton in North America and then um, the videographer uh, or the you know, director um, they work with, she is from there. So on the day off during the Sabaton tour, I recorded the video at a beautiful location. It was nice to be out of the bus <laughs> and out of the dark um, concert halls. And uh, we started playing it live a couple of times and I also then asked the guys maybe they want to join us for Rivers. So they did that and then we made a video of that. So it's like uh, we're one big family now. It's really nice being on tour with them. They're all talented musicians and yeah, it's been a lot of fun. Perfect. I ask this every singer and the answer is every time different. So uh, do you have any warm up exercises for your voice and how do you keep your voice you know, during the tour, it's very difficult to sing every day. Mm -hmm. Well, it's not difficult for me to sing every day. For me, the difficult part is to get enough sleep because um, I'm like a light sleeper. So in the tour bus where you have 17 snoring guys, uh, so I sleep, I have, first of all, make sure I sleep good. So sleeping earplugs, eye mask, sometimes a sleeping pill to help me sleep. And um, if the snoring is too loud, I have my in-ear and my uh, ears with like a white noise to cancel out all the <laughs> <laughs> snoring symphony. Um, we have a couple of really bad snores in the bus. So if I have a good night's sleep, then my voice is anyway in a good condition. And before the show, I like to, I'm always very calm. I do my own hair and makeup and then I get like in the mental state of performing and I do a couple of scales, singing up and down. Um, not a very extensive warm up. I do some, also some warming up of the body. Um, make sure my heartbeat is a little faster. So by the time I go on stage, I'm a feel already a little bit pumped. You know, I have my special tea. I have like throat uh, pastilles that I love to have, even during the show. And sometimes I take like a little dextra energy sugar to like give me that extra extra thing uh, yeah that's it it's quite boring <laughs> okay thank you for the answer mm -hmm. how hard is for band like epica to tour these days you know after the pandemic i heard some bands it's almost impossible to tour how hard is for epica to go on tour mm -hmm. well i think after we started uh, last summer we uh, we first went to mexico to do a tour in may and then we did a lot of festivals what I noticed was for us that the the traveling was more difficult. Like all the airports were uh, were a mess, so um, like cancelled flights, delayed flights, being stuck at airports, uh, having weird flight connections. So it, it was a little bit more stressful to travel. And of course, in the beginning, everybody was scared. So should we wear masks? And we had to skip first like uh, VIP meetings in order, you know, to minimize the risk of getting sick. 
Um, yeah, so um, we all had Corona already. Luckily, not while we had to tour, so when we were home. And um, overall, I think we were really lucky that we could still do many tours, the festivals, and uh, that we can still do what we like. Of course, now the pandemic is changing into another tragedy, a uh, worldwide <laughs> crisis. So it's we've faced one challenge and now the next challenge is that all the prices are going up um, and slowly people might not be able to afford going to concerts anymore or concert halls having to shut down because they can't pay electricity. But I think in the end still the music is what keeps people going and keeps people motivated and uh, it's it's a powerful tool, it unites people and it's, it's beautiful and I think people will always still want to hear music and come to concerts and yeah, I hope that we'll stay like that for a long time. What is your opinion about the music industry these days at all? You know, everything is online, no one's buying CDs at all, mm -hmm. all the streaming services. Mm -hmm. Do you think it's easier now for the musicians or it was probably 20 years back then? Well, I think for us, the metal scene, uh, the fans love physical products. You know, the LP, the vinyl is making a huge comeback. And we also put a lot of effort in creating beautiful artwork, beautiful merchandise. And um, for us, of course, if you compare it to 15 years ago, of course, the record sales go down. But luckily for us, we still manage to, you know, make a good living from it. Um, but the smaller bands, of course, they, they suffer a big time. I mean, we had, before the digital era really flourished, we toured a lot and we got a really good, solid fan base. I think nowadays for new bands starting in this uh, digital era, it's way more challenging. So I think we were one of the lucky ones. Yeah. Do you have Spotify or yes. something like that? Yes. <laughs> What's the last song or band you listened to? Uh, there was uh, Insomnium, um, Only One Who Waits. That's one of my favorite songs. We toured with them uh, and uh, the singer is also on one of the songs of the collaboration project. And they're one of my favorite bands. So, And of course I like to listen to Rammstein, but I also listen to some pop artists as well. And uh, yeah, and also Epica. I've been starting to listen to some older Epica songs. I think maybe in a way of a preparation for writing the new record. I wanted to listen to our whole discography and uh, yeah, feel inspired by that as well. You and your husband are famous musicians. Do you feel any interest in music in your child yet? Yes, yes, and he plays piano, he plays guitar, and he likes metal music, but he also likes German pop stars. And uh, we always do this thing when we're traveling in the car that we, of course, that we plug in my phone. He gets to choose a song and then I choose a song and then we both listen to the music that we like and introduce introduce each other to new music and I think it's it's fun and it's nice to see in him that he loves to listen to music and sings along the songs. When he was very little we could already sense that he had the rhythm in his body because he would stomp with his little foot to the rhythm and he would change as the rhythm changed. And he's now been playing piano since uh, two and a half years and he's pretty talented uh, and it's crazy to see his hands are growing slowly but still their little hands and how they move around the piano and he has this weird thing that he can stretch his fingers his pinky and his thumb like horizontally like extremely wide and he can with the little baby hands already grasp octaves and also on the guitar it's my husband is a teacher as well and he's teaching him both piano and guitar and he could uh, he says like I haven't seen anything like this so We'll see. Musicians blood, I think. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it could have also been that he absolutely didn't have any musical bone in his body, but he definitely has also artistic side. He loves to draw and be creative and yeah. And he's letting his hair grow now. So. Oh, cool. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Do you have anything essential before you leave home on tour, you know, something you need to have with you? Sleeping earplugs yes. for sleeping. They're like custom made, mm -hmm. so they're like made of the shape of my, mm -hmm. my ear and they're um, worth a lot because for me, no sleep means no voice, so I really have to make sure I get that. Um, 
yeah, I take, I have a little pillow with me from home because uh, when we sleep in the tour bus, often the pillows are like very, like a bag with three mm -hmm. feathers, <laughs> if you're lucky. So I bring my own little travel pillow and um, like some perfumes. Mm -hmm. uh, I have like grandma house shoes, you know, that I have on the <laughs> bus from Ikea. <laughs> Like little things like that to make it a little bit more like being and being at mm -hmm. home. And uh, of course, my favorite candy, because I'd never know if I can get good candy abroad <laughs> and my teas and uh, stuff like that. Yeah. How do you spend the time on tour? Sometimes it's very boring, a lot of waiting. How do you spend the time? And I'm never bored. I, I always have find something to do. I love to watch movies or I love to hang with the other guys, um, go sightseeing, go to restaurants, or I also do some photography on the side. So I always, I basically have never enough time to do everything that I want. So n I'm never bored. So, yeah. <laughs> uh, do you have something you want to say to your fans right here? Well, thank you so much for supporting Epica and Apocalyptica and Wheel coming to see us play tonight. It's going to be an amazing show and uh, see you very soon. <laughs>